So building rag-based applications or AI agents is becoming easier and easier every day. But the problem is when you use these rag-based applications on sensitive data, that is where if you do not keep a security-first architecture in mind, it could become a potentially big data risk. To see this in action, let's look at a simple application that I've built leveraging RAG. So I'm going to be uploading this particular really confidential data, which is about employee data verification, which has information about few employees. Obviously it is fake, but you can see that there is email, phone number, social security, driver's license, credit card, and all of these things. So this is like an audit, which generally companies would do. So if I were to actually upload this, and if I didn't have the security protection in mind, so if I'm going to ask, this question, so this was, who was this? This was John Quincy. So I'm gonna ask, hi, can you give me John Quincy's phone number? And right now this is unprotected, right? So that means the LLM is gonna go look into this and the whole rag based architecture and then come back with an answer. But while answering it, it is going to expose the PII information of John, which is unacceptable in today's scenario. So you can see that it is listing directly John Quincy's number. Now on the log itself, you can see that this was bypassed, which was the data loss prevention. Now, in order to make it secured, I'm going to click on this active protection. And this is where I'm going to use Google Cloud's data loss prevention API in order to secure this. So here I'm securing email address, phone number, social security, all of these. And now if I run exactly the same query, you see that it has scanned the entire information. It has made a call to the API and here you will also see that it has detected two different phone numbers and it has redacted that, right? So the LLM actually worked, but then it provided the answer without exposing the PII. And this is something which is super, super critical when you're building rag based applications, which have very sensitive data. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through how you could think of an architecture like this and what are the options available out there for you to protect your sensitive information and we'll go through step by step and hopefully you'll be able to create a secured RAG application. All right, so let's get into it. So in order to understand this, let's look at the architecture. In the center, we have our application. This is the UI we just saw. The first step is really where the user sends a request. What is John's social security number? Our application receives this and pulls the user's information via the RAG architecture. At this exact moment, the application is holding the raw sensitive PII in its memory. And then that is where the step two kicks in, which is the inspection. This is where the toggle, the privacy toggle comes into play. Instead of sending that raw data straight to the AI, the application takes a text and detours it to the Google Cloud Data Loss Prevention API. Now we are at step three, which is the redaction step. So the DLP API spots the SSN pattern, masks it with asterisks, and then sends the redacted text back to our application. Now, step four will be our application constructs a prompt using that sanitized text and then sends it to the LLM. And finally, the result would be the LLM sees a prompt that says the user's SSN is asterisk asterisk one, two, three, four, right? It never sees the real number. Even if the model hallucinates or is jailbroken, it cannot leak what it doesn't know. This is privacy by design. All right, so that's enough theory. Now let's just set this up. So in order for you to do that, you need to come to the Google Cloud console and then select the right project where you want to run this. And then just go search for sensitive data protection DLP, right? So then you click on this and this should take you directly to the API. I already have enabled it. That's why it is giving me an option to manage, but then you need to go ahead and click on enable, right? Once you're done with that, then the next thing that you need to do is you need to also have an API credential. So if you go here and then click on create credentials, this is where you can go ahead and click on the API key and it will immediately generate the API key for you. Once it has done that, you need to get into the API key and then ensure that you're restricting the key to the data loss prevention API only, right? So you select this and that way you're making sure that your API key is not leveraged by all different types of application, right? So something worth noting. And then you can copy the key from here and keep it for your records. And then you can provide this key back into the application that you have built. All right. So that is one of the key steps from a setting up perspective on and on activating this and ensuring that this key is available for you to give to your application in order to protect that. So to make this real, I want to run this on my Google Cloud shell, and I'm gonna share this, this command with you guys as well. So this is the command that I'm gonna run, which is where the initial value is my email is this and phone number is this, and I'm calling this particular DLP API in my particular project, and then we will see the output, right? So what it should do is it should redact my email 
and it should redact my phone number. And this is because it was able to call this particular API live, right? Just wanted to show the specific example here from an IDE perspective. Now, if you go back to this particular, this particular application, right? So what I really did was I asked AI Studio to build an application where it could directly get connected to the DLP API. And in the code, this is where there is this particular service where I have provided the DLP API key and the API URL, right? So here, I'm going to use this as my project. And then this is my particular API key, which I'm going to delete after this demo. But this is the idea, right? Once you have this unactivated, then it is going to run without calling this particular API. And once you have activated this, then it is going to run after calling this particular API. And that's the idea. So by adding this one particular API step, you can actually move your agent from a fun prototype to an enterprise grade compliant application, right? You can go tell your clients or your boss that yes, you can use RAG on internal documentations or secure or sensitive documentation and no, your AI will not leak your secrets. So that was all that I wanted to cover today. I hope this video was valuable to you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know on the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button and please do subscribe. It helps me a lot. Thank you once again for your time and I will see you in the next one.